Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Vicuña on Portainer. So, a little bit about this series. I'm going over a home lab, to installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So. Let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what we installed today. It's open source self-hostable to-do app. Organize everything on all platforms. And this is what it looks like. It has a nice user interface. And then stay organized, cl collaborate with your peers. Use it uh, how you need it. Um, Installation features get hosted. Um, if you go over to features up here, see more. So stay organized and open source, build for speed, ta task, qu quick add magic, a view your task in whatever way you like, list, a Gantt chart, and then a Kanban board, a table. Import your tasks from Todoist, Trello, or Microsoft To Do. Labels, relations, say filters, to uh, due dates, priorities, sh share links, delegation, CalDev, and then attachments. So that's what we'll be installing today. So I'm gonna start on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this, and I'm gonna go over to search over here. Type Vic. And then I'm going to go down here to Vicuña on Portainer. And then I'm going to go Docker Compose. So version 3 of Docker Compose file format is being used. I'm going to set services. And the first service underneath the services is called front end. The image is coming off Docker by default because there's no URL before this. The Vicuña front end. And then the Docker image tag. So the container name is going to be called Vicuña front end. The ports are 80, 81 on the host and on the container is 80. And then the environment variables are Vicuña API URL down here. And then this is the um, URL to connect to the API service down here. So you will need to change this right here to your portainer's IP address. And then restart unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then I'm going to put it in the network of Vicuña network. And then it depends on the DB and the API. So now I'm going to come down here to the API service. So the image is coming off a Docker Hub by default, Vicuña API. And then this is the Docker image. And then this is the Docker image tag right here. And then container name is going to be called Vicuña API. The environment variables are set for to, uh, to connect to the database. And then the JWT uh, secret down here, I would change this. And then the Vicuña service front end uh, uh, URL. So the ports are 3456 is on the host and on the container is 3456. And then volumes are Vicuña files. This is a local volume that's set down, uh, that's defined down here. And then uh, app Vicuña uh, uh, files. And then restart unless stopped. So that means if you stop for a reason, it will not, not try to restart. But if it fails for another reason, then it will try to restart. And then I'm going to set networks down here. I'm going to put in the same network as Vicuña network. And then I'm going to say it depends on the DB. So if you come down here to the DB service, you'll see the, the image is set. So this is coming off Docker up by default. MariaDB is the Docker image. The Docker image tag is 10. And then the container name is going to be called Vicuña DB. And then a commands to set the uh, character set and the co collation. So the environment variables are uh, the password, the user, the database, and the, uh, the, uh, the database down here. So this should rhyme with up here. So what this is doing is the front end is the UI and the front end connects to the API service right here. And then the API service connects to the DB down here. So these variables right here, 
should align with these variables to connect to the DB. And then volumes are Vicuña MySQL. That's a local uh, vo vo volume that's defined down here. And then var lib MySQL is on the container side. So restart and let's stop. So I mean, it, that means if you stop it for a reason, it will not try to, try to restart. But if it fails in another reason, then it will try to restart. And then I'm going to put it in the same network, so Vicuña network. And then I'm going to define the network down here. It's going to be in the bridge. It's going to be a bridge network. So there you go. And then volumes are defined down here. Vicuña MySQL and then the Vicuña fi files. The, the, the files is on the API service and the Vicuña MySQL is on the DB service right here. So I'm going to go over here to copy raw file and then I'm going to go over to my portainer and get this installed. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it and it greatly supports this channel and I very much appreciate it. So, uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So, let's get back to registered programming. So, now I'm going to start my portainer. I'm going to go to local, stacks, and then add stack up here. I'm going to type a name in. So, Vicuña um, stack. So, now this stack will be deployed using Docker and Pose. So, what this is doing is it's just a UI to interact with the Docker engine underneath of it. So, it will start up a, uh, it will start it up with Docker and Pose. So, now I'm going to go uh, to Web Editor right here. I'm going to paste in the Docker and Pose that I explained over in Big Bear Video Assets. Now, we will need to change this to our Portainer's IP. So, I'm going to type my IP address in. So now once you've done that, you can scroll down and you can de uh, go deploy the stack. What this done is it downloaded all the Docker images off the registries, got it extracted and got it up with Docker Compose underneath using the Docker engine. So we got it up and running. So now I'm gonna go over the stack options. So if you go into the stack, you'll see the stack that editor up here so you can edit the docker compose right here and then you can scroll down to update the stack and then you can also repull image and redeploy and this means it repulls the image off the registry and then uh, updates the local cache and then redeploys it if you check mark this and then you can press update so i'm going to go cancel so now if you go back to the stack you'll see actions right here so stop this stack delete the stack and create template from the stack stat duplication slash migration and then you can see all the containers running in here uh, in the stack so um, you can go into each container and and uh, get the logs and different things you can see access controls down here so that's a little bit about the stack options so now if you go into the containers down here you can go into the vicuña api down here so um, you can have actions up here, start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate slash edit. Um, so the container status down here, logs, inspect, stats, console, and attach over here. And then access controls. So create image and then container details like the port configuration and the command, the entry point, the environment variables, and the labels, the restart policy, so you can ch change that, and then you press the update button. You can also come down here to the volumes, and you can see the volumes, and you can see on the host and on the container, and the network that it created, so the bridge network. And um, so, if you go over here to, um, if you go back to the stacks, you can go in each uh, ser service, and have the same options. And then if you go back to the front end, have the same options. So that's a little bit about the container options. So now we're gonna go to the UI. So the portainer's IP address and then 8081 is the port um, f on the host unless you changed it. So I'm gonna go to it. And now you can see it's using the installation that the API service and then i'm going to go create an, an, an account so um i'm going to type a username in a 
email, and then a password. You will need to remember the password, so I'm going to create. So now you can save uh, if you'd like. Um, so you can see overview, the upcoming, the projects, the labels, the teams, uh, inbox. So you can go in here and you can uh, type a task and then you can say the task is done or unmark it. You can also start it and it'll be over in your favorites over here. So Gantt, a table, a Kanban. So um, you can go over here to settings and you can see name, a default project, different options, and then update your password, update your email address, avatars, and then two-factor authentication, export your Facunia data, import from other services, and then imp uh, and then the CalDAV, and then API tokens, and you can put completely delete your Vicuña account if you'd like. You can go up here, see your notifications. You can search, so you can um, search for that testing one. Then you can go to it, and you can put a description in. And then you can press save. There you go, you got a description, subscribe, or remove from favorites, uh, labels, uh, set priority, set progress, set color, assign to user, attachments, add relation, a move, set due date, start a set start date, set end date, set reminders, set repeating interval, and then delete. So you can come over here to the overview again and you can get back to the home page. So um, you can see upcoming over here and select the date range. You can see all your projects. You can add a new project. And then you can say create, and then now you can add a new task inside of the project. You can come up here to edit, set background, share, duplicate, archive, subscribe, and webhooks, delete. And then you can get back to the testing project over here. You can see our favorites. So that's a little bit about the UI for Vicuña. So I just went step by step on getting Vicuña running on Portainer. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or, or any community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.